Hey, what's up guys? Tim here again. Got an awesome tutorial for you today. Something that's been greatly demanded and asked for. And by popular demand, we are doing this, of course. I've always wanted to do this, but um, you know, I've just finally got around to it. So we are doing the Bane's Cuff in Mad Max style. That's right. Um, a lot of you love the Mad Max style, and also a lot of you love Bane's Cuff. So um, yeah, that's what we're doing today. I think a lot of you will enjoy this. This one turned out beautifully. Um, it's definitely my best Bane's Cuff to date. Because I've only actually made three um, at this point. But uh, with each time I've improved a bit and this one turned out perfect, I think. So uh, just to clear a few things up, a lot of people have commented saying, um, oh, I never saw Bane wearing this in the movie and such, such and such. Um, yeah, he never did. Um, it's just that the author of this uh, weave, uh, which I will link in, or I'll mention in the description down below, um, he um, just decided to call it the Bane's Cuff. Um, it actually has nothing to do with um, Batman or The Dark Knight Rises. But, um, hey, I think it's a pretty cool name, and I think the style of it kind of fits Bane anyway. But anyways, this is what we're doing. Um, yeah, it's the Bane's Cuff Mad Max style. It's a pretty... it's a little finicky, but uh, with enough practice you can get it looking great. And it is a six-strand core, um, so I think that's a pretty neat accomplishment, um, having this as Mad Max style. Okay, so yeah, this one turned out wicked. Love it. Gonna be wearing this a lot. And I uh, hope you guys try this one out too. So um, yeah, that's what we'll get into. And remember guys, anything you're looking for, any products and tools I use in the video, you can check out in my affiliate links down below because every time you guys shop through those, you are helping out this channel greatly. All right, so that being said, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so I got my paracord ready here. I've got three strands of red and my main weaving strands are going to be this uh, green here. Or it's like an OD green. Okay. So um, all lengths, of course, will be mentioned right here. So now, we're gonna, the way we're going to start this uh, Mad Max Bane's Cuff is very similar to the Not in Loop Bane's Cuff. You want to find the uh, midpoint of your red strands. I've got it pinched right here between my thumbs. And the midpoint of your green. Okay. So you want to lay this uh, over like this. Okay. Now you want to bring these uh, the two strands behind and out through that loop like so okay so you want to be like this and kind of almost like a cow's hitch so make that a little smaller now bring one strand to the side to, to, to their each respective sides like so okay so now I'm going to find the end of the the green. So this end of this strand is this one here. So we're going to bring it through the middle. So we went kind of through this little space here. Okay. Pardon my thumb while I just hold everything together. Bring all that through there like so. And you're going to do the same with the other side. Okay, so just get this twist out. And do the same with this side, okay? So I'm going to find the end here. So on this side, I'm going to bring this through as well. Let's go through. See where all this, uh, between these two loops here. Like that and bring that through okay so get any twists out so this is what you should end up with okay let me uh, cinch this up a bit nicer so it's gonna look like this on one side and on the other side it's gonna look like this so it's like we did kind of like a cow's hitch or a lark's head, whatever you want to call it. And, and then we passed the strings through each side. Now, before you move on, you want to make this top loop appear as small as possible because we're doing the, um, the Bane's cuff, right? So let's fiddle with that. Let's pull all the excess through. 
like that make it as small as you can and then just kind of work it so it'll work all the slack through and it's not going to go anywhere because it's looped right That's getting there. You can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just working the slack through. Okay. See how it's getting pretty small. You want this like as small as possible. So let's just keep doing that. Okay. So this is where you should be now. I've got um, all the cinch, uh, all the slack cinched out. And you want your red cords to be. Uh, even so they're even on both sides even amounts on each side and you want these to be even as well of course so now in terms of a weaving setup this will be um, a little more difficult because you can't really do this one on a on a jig uh, but i really suggest you tie this down to something so what i'm going to do i have just a bit of scrap yellow cord here i'm going to put this through the loop here okay like that and what i will do for my personal setup i have a very heavy monitor just off out of frame there. I'm going to tie this to the monitor so it's anchored up there like that. And for these uh, red strands, you want to anchor these down. I'm going to take one of these oversized metal clips and I'm just going to clip it to my desk, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. I don't know what your setup is like. Um, just figure out what works for you. But ideally, you want tension to hold these strands down and you want something holding this up okay so do whatever you need to do to get yourself in that situation and as for these strands um you see how they're all kind of overlapping um that's okay just make sure they all kind of stay in the same order you don't want like this one say twisted down here and then that one over there right so just try to keep them in relative um, order like this so i know that this one goes like this and that, and that right so that shouldn't be too big of an issue, but um, okay, so set yourself up and then we can start uh, weaving. Okay, so I'm all set up now. Got uh, everything uh, hitched up. So I got a decent tension on here to keep everything straight. So to start off, I'm using FIDS on my um, weaving strands. It's just gonna be easier to show you. And I think it'll be easier for you if you use FIDS as well, just because you have to do a bit of you know, almost like stitching with this, with these knots. But um, anyways, let's get into it. So on the right strand here, I'm going to bring this through the uh, first gap here, I guess you can call it. So we're going to bring all the cord out this way, like that. And do the same thing on this side. I'm going to go through first two. Okay, so now we've got both our working strands like this. So now we're going to start off with the um, the twist or ridge in the center. So um, in the knot and loop version, I showed one twist. In the buckle version, I did two twists. It's up to you. You can do either one. Um, I'm going to do two because I like that look better. And keep in mind um, which direction you're twisting and keep that consistent. So I'm always going to go left over right once and then twice like that okay so now your cords will be kind of twisted down here so bring each cord to the respective sides like that like that you know this first part will be a little tricky i'm gonna have to keep my thumb in this area so apologize if it's kind of in the way but it's necessary Okay, so when I've got that ridge there, kind of push it up if you can. It's okay, you can push it up after actually. So now for the first knot, I'm gonna do on this side. Um, we're going to bring this, it's already over on this side. We're going to take this end of the strand and we're gonna go underneath the first two on the outer side, bring that through. Working with a decent amount of cord, so bear with me. Okay, so then from here, we're gonna go through the same gap, but above this cord here, like so. Pull all the cord through. Make sure you don't have any twists, like that. 
Uh, kind of push that up. Now, I'm going to tie this one a bit looser just so you can see. But now, to finish off the knot, you see this little gap here? It's in between these two strands. We're going to go right here. Okay, that's net right next to the ridge. And then we're going to bring that through and bring it back to the front. Okay, so pardon the mess. Bring all this through. It will get twisted, so just untwist as you go. Okay, now you want to kind of cinch out the excess, like so. Okay, I'm just kind of pulling on this and pushing up. Now you don't want to pull too hard because that'll deform this side of the knot. And push it up. Okay, so there's the first one. Now we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. See how it kind of stays after the first one. So on this side, uh, same thing. We're going to go, we're already overlapping the outer two. We're going to go through here. Bring everything over. Like that. And then we're going to go through this little gap here. So remember right above this cord through here. Bring all the cord through. Then you're going to do the same thing. This will be a bit harder to see because I've already got that ridge in the middle. But remember, you're going behind. Let me just make the gap for you. See right there. So you're going to go behind, remember, it's in between these two cords, so right through here. Oh, no. Right there. You see? Okay, so it's the, it's the exact same thing on the other side, right? And that is basically the knots. So we're just going to continue from here. So again, pull all the excess through. And the key with this one is patience. Um, you want to take your time and make sure your knots are consistent as you go. Okay, so I'm going to push everything up so we have less than our gaps up there. Just going to pull everything towards me. And there we go. I think that looks decent. Okay, so now we're back to square one. Let me get my cords set up again. Back to square one, we're going to do the exact same thing. Okay, remember I did left over right. We go one and two. Okay, and a lot of people have uh, trouble keeping the ridge centered. Um, I'd suggest after every twist, you just use your thumb to keep the tension there. Keep it from unraveling because when it unravels, it starts to look... Um, a little inconsistent, okay? So this time, I'm not going to leave as many gaps, but I'm going to grab my cord. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. Go a little faster this time. The outer two. This is a problem with working with a lot of cord. If you can see what I'm doing on the out of frame, it's kind of funny. But anyways, um, yeah, we're going to go through like that. We'll go through here. It's kind of hard too because I got to dodge the uh, the mic stand attached to my desk and the camera stand. But anyways, let's not get off track. Okay, so what I like to do is actually make this this knot as tight as possible. Push it up like that. See, I'm, I'm almost like I have to form each knot carefully, right? Just to keep it consistent. Push that up, and then now we go through here. Okay. This is one of those uh, patterns, you know, the, the more time you take to uh, make everything look good, the better your end result be. So don't rush this one. 
Okay, so that's one side. Now let's do the last one. So again, I'm going to go through here. Bring that around. Bring this through the middle. Push that knot up. And then from there, we're going to go through the gap here. Okay, so that is basically it. It's the same pattern as we did before. And we're going to continue weaving our way, making our bane's cuff. So, I mean, it's essentially the same thing um, as the knot and loop, but we, we've got six strands instead. So it's kind of like a mishmash of uh, both the buckle technique and the knot and loop technique. Okay. So I'm going to continue um, tying my knots going down. And um, when you get to your somewhat desired length, we can start to finish it off from there. Well, just to give you guys a quick tip, as you can see, my center ridge this time around is very, very consistent and much better than my previous attempts. So the way I achieved that is uh, when you do the twist, uh, so you do your two twists, okay? So from here, at this point, uh, you wanna hold your twist there, like with your thumb. You wanna keep the tension there. I'm holding the cord in my left hand here. And now you wanna do um, the knot on this side, right? And what I've noticed is as long as you hold that uh, that tension there while you're tying this knot on the side, um, well, I'm going to pass the cord through the back here too, but uh, as long as you use your thumb to hold the ridge there while you're tying this, um, it should stay um, where it is, like what it looks like when you're holding it. And then from there, when you're done that, you can tie this side and you'll have that nice consistent center ridge. Okay, but I'm just about done. And um, now I'm going to unhitch everything and we're going to terminate the bracelet. Um, yeah, so let's move on to there. All right, so the first area you want to focus on is our two main center cords. So we want to deal with uh, this stuff. So what I'm going to do, let's move this out of the way first. I'm going to tie two uh, cobra knots. Okay, so that's one like this. And two, like so. Now I'm going to push this all the way up, pull that really tight. Okay, so that's pretty simple enough. Now for these two parts, these two uh, remaining green cords, I've tried this um, by tucking them in first and then tying the cobra knots, but I found this works better tying the cobra knots first and then, um, and then tucking them in. So what we're going to do now just to make it look really nice is we're going to do one last twist. So let's go uh, two turns over. So I just did the same double twist. Okay, like that. Try to hold everything together like so. Now, after that twist, we're going to I'm just going to feed it in through uh, right above here, right above the cobra knot. Like right there. Okay. See where that is? So I'm going to feed one strand in through there. Avoid any twists. That's one side. Now for the other, I'm just going to do the same thing. See this little gap here? And work our cord through here. Okay. So that looks pretty good. 
right? So that we still have that little ridge going all the way to the end. Now, uh, for all of our excess, we have these two going through here. I think to be safe, you could just snip and singe them here, but for a bit more security, what we can do is we can just um, stitch them through here. Okay, so that's one. Let's take that off. And now the second one. We'll do that just under these two. Hopefully this doesn't uh, deform the design on the other side. Let's take that off and see how we did. Yeah, I think that looks fine. Yeah, that works out a lot, actually. Okay, so we have that. So now these ones, th those can be cut there. And for these ones, these ones we can just snip and singe them here, too. I think that's okay. That's a nice, clean little um, end part. And then you can take off the uh, excess, so all these four red ones that are under my, I'm pinching, you can, you can clip all those. And then all we have to do next is tie our kind of diamond knot thing here. Well, we'll feed it through here, tie our diamond knot, and we'll be almost done. Okay, so I snipped off all the excess paracord. Now um, on my last end cords, we're going to attach our fids one last time. So I always suggest you guys uh, invest in a nice set of fids. They make everything a lot easier. Get two as well, because uh, oftentimes, you know, more, than, more often than not, you're working with two sets of cords, or sorry, uh, a pair of cords. Okay, so I got my fids attached, and now we feed through this loop here. If this loop for you has loosened it at any point, just um, pull the excess through to make it smaller, and um, yeah, just feed it through the bracelet to make it a little smaller, okay? Because you want that nice tension on there, right? So let's uh, do this. I'm gonna put one in through here, like so. So that went on the right side. Now let's do this on this side. So just testing the tension here. And yeah, I think it's good actually. Pretty good. As long as you pull it shut and it closes, um, yeah, that's good. It doesn't like, you know, spring back open, all right? And, okay, so now, just about done. Um, for this point, you can tie any stopper knot you want. Um, I think I'm just gonna go with the classic diamond knot. I mean, I love the diamond knot, and, you know, I've got a bunch of different tutorials on different uh, stopper knots, but let's just quickly do the diamond knot. Okay, we're gonna use our classic hand jig method. I'm gonna go a little fast, of course, but uh, let's stay in focus here. Give me a sec. Okay. So yeah, you can tie any um, stopper knot you want. I'm just gonna do the diamond knot. Got our Carex bend. Let's bring this one through here. Like that. Let's bring this one through here. I know that was really quick, but you guys, of course, know that I have a, a dedicated tutorial for the stopper knot, so you can check that out. I will link it in the video, of course, as always. Okay, so now. Let's get this cinched up. So this tail is still too long, obviously, but um, yeah, I'm just going to adjust the stopper knot probably to about here. I'd say about there. Because uh, the more uh, excess you have, the wider it can open up and you can you know, slip your hand in and out. So you'll have to test that to your personal liking. 
but I'm going to give it about oh, two and a half inches or so. Okay, so I'm going to move the stopper knot up there, and of course we always do that just by, you know, pulling the, uh, the excess through, as we always do. Where is it? See so yeah, how we pull, you know, the excess through the knot like that feed it through. Okay, so I'm going to fine tune all that and then we'll be finished. Okay, and there we have it guys. We are done. So I snipped and singed off all the excess, adjusted my diamond knot to where I want to, where I need it, and it's just got enough clearance for me to get my wrist through and it works perfectly. Got a good amount of tension on there so it stays closed when you pull it shut. Ooh, this one turned out really well. I uh, wasn't sure if I'd be able to do this one well. Um, but yeah, with a bit of planning, a bit of thinking, I think this one turned out really nicely and I really enjoyed making this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it too and I hope you guys will try this one out. I know a lot of you love the Mad Max style and a lot of you love the Bane's Cuff, so I think this is you know, perfect for a lot of you out there. Alright, so uh, remember guys, anything you see in my video that I use, you can check out all the uh, related product info in the description down below because every time you guys shop through my affiliate links, you're helping this channel continue and go on and do great things all right so uh, if you have any questions or comments please do leave them down below let me know what you think do you like this design and how do you feel about having this as a mad max style i think it's great i think it's awesome so guys thank you so much for watching appreciate you guys spending your time with me and uh yeah i'll see you guys on the next tutorial bye